Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Wealth Wednesday with North Arundel County Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. I am Laura Gregory, and I am the Committee Chair for Economic Development. I am here with my co-chair, Michelle Fuller, and on behalf of our president, Tally Red, we want to say welcome. We thank you so much for joining us this evening, and we hope that this information helps you and gives you insight in all your financial endeavors. So let's jump right into it. The topic of discussion this evening is we're talking about prospering in a COVID environment, hashtag side hustles. And it's all about entrepreneurship, right? It's about starting our business, building our business, and learning to sustain them in a challenging environment. So let me just give you a little bit of background about the concept and the idea. Economic development's theme this year is journey to financial wealth, mapping the path to build wealth. And we all know that a journey is literally moving from one point to the other. So for the next six months, we have Wealth Wednesday workshops set up every second Wednesday of the month. And the idea behind that is we want to give you all a true depiction of what it looks like when someone goes on a journey to acquire and build wealth. So for example, our first workshop, we're talking about prospering in a pandemic, okay? We're talking about side hustles. And most people, when they start this journey, they're starting to think about ways where, how can I make some extra money? I need some more cash flow. We need to get to the bag, okay? So we wanna make sure when we have this, this discussion with you all, that you are well aware of how we're operating in our current conditions. So we have a sound dynamic panel for you all this evening, okay? It's comprised of entrepreneurs and business owners from our local community. They're gonna tell us and share with us their experience on how they were able to start and sustain their business during this changing environment. Because sometimes what we tend to do is we tend to get in our own way. We put limits on ourselves because we don't know how to change and we don't know what's on the other side. We move in a total phase of apprehension like, oh, I'll wait next year or no, I'm not gonna start it now or life happens so I can't do it because I don't have the means or the funds. But we're here to dispel all of those myths and encourage you all to go after everything that you know you deserve. If it's entrepreneurship and if this is your way of starting your journey, journey to build wealth, we want you to seize the opportunity and move forward and go through with it. So let me just give you all some data points so you know exactly how real this thing is. Americans started, and listen y'all, this is serious. Americans started 4.4 million businesses during 2020. Come on a 24% increase from the year before in 2019. Now this is pre-COVID, okay? It's by far the biggest increase on record based on a study released by the Peterson Institute for International Economics. Now that's real. The growth appeared to be the strongest in retail and warehouse businesses, perhaps reflecting the boom in e-commerce during the pandemic. So we all know back in March, 2020, they told us, hey, hope, don't move. Don't go nowhere. You can't even visit your family. So what did everybody do? We navigated virtually. We went online. We shopped online. We, we worked out online. We, we visited our family. On, everything was online. We, sh we shared and sent gifts online. So we have to be very creative and get out of our own way sometimes when it comes down to us forging forward and doing what we know is best for us when it comes down to our financial wealth, okay? So before I pass the torch, because we're about to, like I said, jump right into it. Before I pass the torch to my co-chair, Michelle Fuller, we're going to have an ERT note, emergency response team note for all of you, all of you to view. We're going to leave it up for about 30 seconds. And then we're going to have a health is wealth tip. Now you say, I know you're thinking, Laura, I joined this call to talk about wealth, but it, it, it goes neck and neck. It's hand in hand because literally health is wealth, okay? And we need to start identifying that because after all of you join this journey of literally becoming financially free and creating and building your wealth, you have to understand you gotta posture yourself mentally and physically so that you can make those right decisions in order to forge forward to start your businesses or your side hustle. On top of that, 
I, I want all of us to enjoy the fruits of our labors, okay? So we're gonna have a quick slide presented by the tech committee. And we're gonna leave that up for about 30 seconds or so. So you can, again, just govern yourself accordingly. And then we'll have the health as well tip. Thank you. Okay, so health is wealth. Every little bit helps. We've been vaccinated, we wear our masks, we keep our distance and we work. And we are all still not completely safe from the pandemic. We can still contract it and spread it, but we can live through it. What can we do to help? Our bodies must be ready to fight back. We need to boost our body's immunity. And here are a couple of easy ways to help. One, drink more water. Our body is made up of mostly water. Brain is 80%, blood is 85%, bones is 25%, cells 90% and muscles 80%. Water boosts our immune system. It keeps our kidneys health, healthy and improves circulation and detoxifies. Number two, get more vitamin D. Our bodies produce vitamin D when exposed to direct sunlight. A few minutes a day, a few times a week during the summer will be enough for the year. However, most of us don't get enough because our skin does not absorb enough or we don't spend enough time outside. So you may want to ask your doctor if you need a supplement. You can eat more canned tuna and fortified orange juice to help. Vitamin D helps with immune and bone health. Many elderly persons that are hospitalized are dehydrated due to a lack of water. And most of the COVID patients that didn't survive were deficit in vitamin D, deficient, excuse me, in vitamin D. So drink your water and get some vitamin D so you're able to fight back. So now I'm gonna turn it over to my co-chair, my right hand, Michelle Fuller, so she can give introductions to our panel so we can get this party started. And before she starts, one last thing. We need your participation. We need you to go off in the chat. This is not just a discussion amongst the panel, but it's about all of you. So feel free to drop your comments, share your questions so we can answer them. Because again, this is all about how you succeed and how you win. I'm your fan, I'm your best supporter, so let's go. Michelle. All right, thank you for the introduction. Welcome everybody. We are so excited to have you here. We're gonna jump right in and introduce you to our speakers. We have five speakers tonight. Um, the first one is Monzi Faulkner. Monzi's business is called All In His Hands Barbershop. Um, it is a barbershop, obviously. He is located, his business is located in Pasadena, Maryland, and he's been in business almost 28 years. He's approaching 28 years. The next speaker is David Gerton. He is the health debt coach. And his, the name of his business is Live Now Fitness. It is a health and fitness um, location in Elk Ridge, Maryland, Fitness Center. He's been in business for 15 years. So we're really eager to hear about how he pivoted. Um, the third uh, uh, speaker is our own Soror Moniqua Roberts Gray, um, first vice president, by the way. The name of her business is Paparazzi Accessories. Um, it is a jewelry and accessories business and the location is online. So this is a home-based business you can do anywhere. And she's approaching her one year anniversary on October 19th. Our uh, fourth speaker is James Henson. Uh, the, his business is Henson and Associates. He is a financial services um, uh, entrepreneur. He is located in Glen Burnie, Maryland. He's been in business for 16 years, and he focuses on companies that are looking to work and recruit Black professionals. And then our fifth speaker is me. Um, I, my business is called Minerva Global Business Solutions, and my type of business is sales coaching. 
Um, and I also do wine sales. So I have a wine sales business through a company called Boise Collection, um, which is a Napa based wine company. And I'm located in Maryland, home based as well. And I've been in business for a little over a year. And that's it. Okay. So now you know who we all are. So we're going to jump right in. And this will be sort of a roundtable format, just so you know. We're going to be posing, I will be, and, and Laura will be posing questions um, to our speakers to evoke a discussion. And again, if you have uh, questions or comments, please put them in the chat. We want you to participate. So the first question is, and this is really going to be directed towards um, Moniqua and me, actually. Um, because we're the sort of newbies in um, starting our business during COVID. So Monique, I'm going to ask you first, what was your state of mind when you decided to start your business during the pandemic? You know, oftentimes people would think, why would you do something like that? So what, what, was, what prompted you to do that? Thank you, Soro, Michelle. I definitely appreciate it. I'm super excited to be here. And to be quite frank with you, I have always had an entrepreneurial spirit. So I have other businesses outside of what I'm doing with paparazzi. But to answer your question more specifically, I started looking at my full-time government job. I felt dependent upon them because I didn't do all the things that was necessary that I needed to do in case we have a shutdown or if the budget isn't passed. So I'm a huge advocate of multiple streams of income off the, off the top. Mm -hmm. and. I saw the jewelry. I was impressed with the jewelry. I was introduced to it by actually one of our sores, Dora Sherry Freeman, and one of my coworkers. And I thought, why not now? And make you feel good about yourself. It's an easy, low head cost. I can do it. So I just wanted to jump out there during the pandemic to have additional financial freedom where I wasn't dependent upon my government job, to be completely honest. Awesome. And I, I'll, that's awesome. Um, that's a great, great story. And that's, I, I agree with you. I'm, I'm, I've been a proponent of multiple streams of income um, most of my adult life. I watched my parents um, buy some real estate and they were, um, so they did that in addition to their jobs. And that actually was how I started. I, like you, I had another business as well. I, I had been um, a landlord for about 13 years. Um, and I, at one point, owned about five pieces of property in Baltimore. So I, and then I decided I was tired of being a landlord. So at the time that COVID hit, I had already sold three properties and I was positioning myself to sell two and get out of it. Then COVID hit, I got laid off. Um, and I decided to take some time off. Fortunately, I had been pretty diligent for most of my career. And I was able to take a break. And it was during that time that I had already, I was very interested in the wine industry. So I already got a wine certification just for fun. I thought it would be fun. So I did that. Um, but then um, right after I got laid off, a client, a former client of mine called me and asked me about doing some consulting for their company. Um, and I thought, oh, I, if I'm going to do that, I need to set up a, a business, right? So I set up my LLC, another one, because I knew I was going to be dissolving the real estate one. So I set up a new one. I think it was $75 or something like that online. It was very easy. Got my EIN number. Um, that was free. And for 75 bucks, I was, I was pretty much in business, right? Um, and then when COVID hit, this client worked in the travel channel. So of course, everything went away. And the person who was going to hire me actually ended up getting a lot of laid off too. So as it turned out, I still, I had the business set up, but I said, I'm going to go for it. I'm still going to spend some time working on my business. In the meantime, I decided to um, become a brand ambassador for this wine company. It cost me $49. And I, all of a sudden I had a wine business and I started doing virtual wine tasting and making additional money that way. So that was how I started basically two businesses during COVID. Are, any questions? Any questions in the chat? Because we want what we want to do 
is we want to take questions as they come, as we're working, talking through different topics. So if Chandra, let us know if anybody has a question. And Yes, so. there is actually, there is actually two questions. The first question is for Moniqua, uh, Sora, Mo Sora Gray. Uh, what are some of the digital tools you had to get comfortable with in order to get your online business up and running? Okay, um, really quickly, um, to piggyback off what Sora Michelle shared, I had businesses before, so I had my EIN number. I was familiar. I have a website. I, all of that was easy because the foundational things were there. However, because of those businesses, because of COVID, no one was traveling. No one was doing events. So uh, paparazzi came at the right time for me. But as well-versed as I am with social media, I needed to treat paparazzi the same way as I did my additional businesses. Mm -hmm. I had to work it like I don't make six figures for the government. I had to get real mm -hmm. hungry real fast. And that mm -hmm. meant stop going off the dome. I had to start writing down strategic goals where it made sense. So I wasn't wasting money. So social media could be your friend. And it, it, and it is for me because you can sell jewelry, wine, um, gym membership services online, but you have to have content. Content is king. So mm -hmm. before you do anything, it's great to get TikTok, but familiarize yourself with why TikTok works, why YouTube works. Don't be a jack of all trades, master of none. Mm -hmm. Just get very yeah. educated on what it is that you're trying to do because I am familiar and I'm not really scared to jump in. I was like, oh, I'm going to do this and that, but did it make sense to do it? So you've got to know what your target audience is and get very laser focused on what you're trying to do. So I'm a big proponent of social media, but I also like private parties. I like the personal touch to mm -hmm. be able to interact with people. And then when I say content is king because I'm in communications, who you speak to, who you write for, it goes a long way. So who, how I address my younger audience may come across a little sharper, quicker, it may be more acronyms, right? What you doing, WYD? How I uh, attest to adults, seasoned professionals, that tone and content is different. Mm -hmm. So you have to be very acutely aware of who your target audience is, what is your strategic goal, and how you're going to get there. Some stuff you can wing, but when I did that, it took me right back into the room, got the sheet of paper out, and I had to start strategizing. So um, that would be my tips or assignment. Thank you. Thank you, Sora Gray. And definitely the chat is going, is blowing up over here. So thank you everyone for uh, chiming in. So just a couple of things. Um, just wanted to let everyone know, everyone who's participating this evening, we will make sure that you have the contact information for all of our particular speakers and how you can get in contact with them. Um, another question was, what does being, and this is for Sora Fuller, what does being a wine ambassador entail? Well, basically, it entails you, um, you sell wine, essentially, you sell wine. And so um, obviously, the, the, the program comes with parameters around how you sell the wine. Um, but we do direct delivery. So you can sell it to friends and family. Um, I have business clients, I sell wine to realtors, for example, who give wine gifts, um, when someone buys a house from them. Um, there are businesses that um, give out gifts or have events, for example, and they wanna give a custom bottle of wine um, that has their label on it or their logo. Um, so we do a lot of things like that. I do, we do um, wine tastings. So that are, and I, I'm because I have a bit of a wine education, I, we, I do what we call like deductive tasting. So we're, if, you ever, if you've ever gone to a tasting and they're swirling the wine and smelling the wine and doing all that, I do all of that and talk about the wine. So during COVID, I was doing birthday parties. I was doing family reunions, friend, girls' nights, uh, couples, date nights, you know, with wine. So they would order the wine. And I would take them through a whole tasting and it was like an event. Um, I did Jack and Jill chapters um, who just wanted to get together and do that. So I actually, actually made some money doing it because people really were looking for something to do. And even though they were on Zoom for work, oftentimes 
they enjoyed learning about wine and kicking back. Um, since COVID has, it hasn't really eased up. It's sort of morphed, if you will. And we've been able to get out a bit more. I've been doing some in person. Um, but it just, you know, the great thing about it is you can manage it however you want to. Um, some, some of our ambassadors only do tastings. Some only sell to their network. Some only do fundraisers. So it's really up to you. Thank you, Soar, for definitely. Soar uh, Jennifer Matthews with the comment. Go ahead, Soar Matthews. Uh, I heard the, the term EIN um, from both of our speakers. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to make sure that our guests knew what the EIN is. It's essentially the social security number for your business, depending on the type of business that you have. So for um, something like um, paparazzi, you don't necessarily need an EIN, but it's your ID number that you file your taxes with when you have your business. So I just wanted to put that out there. And I don't know if any of the speakers want to talk about the tax advantages of a home-based business, because in some of the introductions, the speakers have home-based businesses and some have brick and mortar. Um, or offices. So I just wanted to put that out there. If anybody, um, you know, is interested in that, you could take me off mute. But if you could mute me back, I'd appreciate that. I can't raise my hand, so. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for that. And by the way, just FYI, in terms of my situation with my wine business is I actually joined the ambassador program under the umbrella of my business. So my EIN that I set up for my business um, was applicable for, because it was established under my, my, uh, my Minerva Global Business Solutions. So the EIN number was still appropriate for that. Thank you, I'm so Philip. We do have just a few more questions. I know, thank you everyone for chiming in on the chat. There's definitely a lot of good you know, information. We have a few more questions, um, a few more requests from our speakers. So one of the requests, and this is for Sora, uh, Moniqua, and even Sora Phil, and even for the rest of our uh, presenters this evening, mm -hmm. as a new business owner, the question the person that was asking is like, how do you find balance, especially if you are working still a nine to five and you want to transition into a side hustle, but knowing in the beginning, you are juggling a lot of things. So how do you find balance? that balance. So Gregory? Uh, yes. So I can, I can speak to that for sure. Um, <clears throat> I didn't want to be a part of the panel because I'm slowly transitioning out of one of my businesses, but this tip will help, you know, you at, at, at any point in time. But when you're trying to find balance, um, and I'm a cosmetologist and I work full time again for the government as well. Um, one of the things that I started out doing is taking a, one client a week or, you know, taking one client every two weeks, you want to make sure that you don't jump head first. And I know we all heard that saying, and it kind of can be cliche, but you want to make sure that you're slowly walking into it so you can clearly see and define how much of it you're able to stand versus, you know, working your nine to five, because the objective and what I learned and what I was, you know, taught is that working full time, and having a side hustle or a business, you want to slowly transition yourself out of that nine to five because the goal is to work for yourself. The, I mean, because that's when we're talking about acquiring and building wealth, the goal is at some point, like Ms. Fuller said, is to take time off and be able to take time off without any restrictions and again, any limitations. So I would encourage you to just slow walk yourself into whatever your avenue is so that you can see how much of it you're able to actually hold in your hand so that you can find that fine balance between working full-time, having your side hustle or your part-time business, and then slowly navigating, you know, away from working for someone else and slowly working for yourself. Can I chime in on that as well? Uh, I would like to just add, you know, before I got into business, uh, I was actually a government contractor, uh, you know, I'm so into a, you know, the, the good old, CIA. And uh, so it was a very hectic schedule. I was working probably 50 and 60 hour work weeks uh, as, a, as an IT professional uh, when I launched my business. So there really wasn't a balance. Um, you know what I'm saying? So it was kind of like 
I would work uh, by day uh, as far as for, for someone else, but then made sure I had uh, clients to see at night. So uh, literally I was kind of like burning on both ends, uh, you know, get up at like five in the morning, be at work by like six, uh, get off by two thirty, three o'clock and have, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight appointments, like literally appointments from the time I get off, I was going to see clients. Um, and so I literally worked myself out of the job. Uh, so started my business and then two years later I fired my job. So, um, but I had an end in mind. That's one of the things I tell people too, is right. that you want to, when you begin, you begin with the end in mind. So when I knew uh, what I was going to do, that was my passion. I was passionate about helping people develop their financial plans and goals and reach those. So it was like, this was what I want to do. I no longer was, I never really was passionate about IT. I just, I was money motivated. You know what I mean? So I majored in computer science and went that avenue, but it wasn't a passion. Um, and, but when I got into the financial arena, it was, it was amazing. It was, it was everything, you know what I mean? And so, uh, so I just literally set a date and just started to tell people, y'all ain't gonna see me here next year. And they were, they thought I was lying. And then I told them this is my last day. And they were like, you were serious? I said, yeah. And uh, that was it, you know? And so here we are 16 years now thriving. And uh, so, that's so that's, that's the one thing. Yeah. So definitely set a goal of when you want to be out, because if you don't, the one thing that you have to understand, and, and I'll share this, when I quit, when I fired my job, uh, I fired my job in 2007, 2008 happened. Okay. So for, for anybody that, that's mm -hmm. on here that knows about 2008, oh and in the God. financial arena, it came yeah. to a screeching halt. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so for me, it was devastating. And so, you know, I always tell people, because people always say, did I regret doing it? No, I don't regret doing it. Was it hard? Yes. But at that time, everybody was struggling. Nobody was trying to deal in finance. I mean, right. all business had shut down. It was like a real recession. And so ultimately, if I would have had a job when that happened, I probably would have never left my job. So I always say stuff happens for a reason. So mm -hmm. people that did start a business in COVID, I can definitely relate because, you know, 2008 was like a, uh, 2020 was like 2008. You know what I mean? Markets was going down. People didn't, you know, the difference was the markets were going, people were going, still going to work. 2020, the, the world pretty much just shut down. So, you know what I'm saying? You can launch in those times and still be successful, but it's, it's kind of, I always tell people it's walking by faith, not by sight. So, you know what I mean? So that's, that's the big thing. Yeah. I'll make one comment too. Um, I actually, I was working in corporate America, which I, I did for over 25 years. So uh, when I first bought my real estate um, and I had rental property, so I hired a property manager <laughs> to help me, right? So, you know, sometimes if you, if you, if you feel like you're too stretched, you can outsource things that, um, to reduce your stress level. Let me just say that. Um, and, and my rent, my rent paid for the property manager's fee. So that was what I did to try to maintain balance today. Um, I'm not working a full-time job. So all I'm doing is my business right now. Um, and technically, um, I, I'm technically retired. Um, I'm able to retire. I want to keep working and doing things and being active. So I'm doing it on my own. But, um, the, the reason I can do that is because when I was working, I was very diligent about my saving and investment. That's a whole nother presentation that stay tuned. Cause we'll be getting into that in future, um, you know, workshops, but that's why I could take time off and I could start my business with a little bit of ease. So even within, um, even though I, I'm doing my businesses primarily, um, I still get really busy. I, sometimes I'm busier than I was when I had a job. So what I do to maintain balance is I get up every morning and exercise. And I'm really unapologetic. I'm very serious about it. I don't care what I have to do. I get up and do something. So that's what I do to, to try to have some sort of balance as well as um, wellness and be committed to that. Wow, thank you everyone for sharing these awesome tips on how to maintain um, balance. Um, another question that was um, asked in the chat um, and I think this is open to every, you know, everyone, I'm not gonna frame it this way, is how do you keep uh, keeping customers in the loop and keeping customers interested in what you have um, 
to offer. And I want to um, just throw that out to Coach David because he has a dynamic way of how he keeps his clients um, in the loop into what uh, he does. So go ahead, Coach David. Yeah, um, for us, you know, social media, for those that follow me on social media, that's a big tool for us. You know, I do a lot on social media. I send out regular emails. You know, I'm always in my stories. Like people always know what's going on with Living Out Fitness. We have a really strong community. So like, that's the big thing too about building a business during this time is building community, building your network. You know, that's, that's how we were able to thrive during COVID is because of our network. Because once COVID hit, people started looking for a fitness resource and they knew of us because we were always making noise, always making noise in your, like, I know you get a lot of emails from us. We're always on social media. I'm always posting. So that's the big thing for us especially social media, because it's free, you know? So use that as much as you can. And I actually want to talk about with James, with the whole balance thing, going back to that, like I was like James, I was actually working before work on my side business, after work on my side business, during work on my side business. So like it was, it was more of a balancing act and it was a love for what I was doing. But jump on social media, and just throw, I think Monique would talk about content. Don't worry about it being perfect. Just get your message out. As long as it impacts one person, that's all that matters because that one person is going to continue to add up and add up, especially if you're doing good. Awesome, that's great. I think we're gonna move on to the next question. So bear with us because we could, I think we could stay on this topic all day. <laughs> Right. So, so let's move to the next question. Can, so the next can, question. Can I, put, can I chime in the story, Jennifer, again? I just want to piggyback real fast because uh -huh. this committee, just to piggyback, has a phenomenal newsletter. And I'm going to ask somebody to drop the link in the chat so that if you're not on the newsletter, if you didn't get it this morning, you need to sign up because we do just what the gentleman said. And I'm going to put the plug in later on at the end. But we do that and we're um, putting up a great website. All right, question number two. Where did your business idea or concept come from before and during COVID? So who would like to address that? Um, well, for me, I would say uh, what happened with me was actually, I got introduced to financial services after witnessing a layoff. Um, you know, having a job at a top secret clearance, you know, five read-ons, I thought I was untouchable. Uh, but when, you know, the termination letter came to my printer, uh, I was like, okay, what am I gonna do? But 15 minutes later, HR called, said we made a mistake. It was not for me. And I was like, okay, how can y'all make a mistake like that? Uh, so ultimately, um, I actually went to the person that it was for. It was actually my director of business development. And I'm like, if they're letting him go and he had just brought in five million dollars with a business, I'm like, I'm gonna go talk to him and see what he did or see what he's gonna do. So I went and talked to him and uh, I said, you know, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna start your own company? And so ultimately he said, I'll be fine. Me and my wife have a business on the side that's doing well and I'll be okay. And I said, well, what do you do? He said, I show people how to make more money, save more money and get out of debt. And I said, can you come talk to me and my wife? Cause I was like, I think I need all that because we were making great income but nobody ever talked to me about money. Nobody talked about investing. I saved money. But nobody talked to me about, you know, making more money, all that type of stuff. And so he came, shared concepts with me and my wife, and I was just blown away. Like, I, I had never heard of those concepts before, and I was just like, this is exciting. And so literally for me, it was like eye-opening. And so I was like, if I need the help and I haven't heard of it, I'm sure my friends and family members, because we're not having these conversations, so they probably don't know it. So I gave referrals uh, to him, and he went and saw him, and... I said, well, dang. And they called me back, said, thanks for sending my way. And so I asked him, how could I get licensed? How could I do it? And so that's, that's how it started for me. He was like, you know, I'll train you and show you everything you need to know. And that's how I got involved in financial services because I said, I can go and empower more people uh, mm -hmm. doing this. So I just, I just got passionate about that, you know, cause, it, cause I needed it. And then I went and helped more people, you know. That's excellent. And we do need that. 
we do need <laughs> services like you, like what you provide. What about anybody else? Any other speakers have any thoughts on that? Well, for me, it was more of, I was working in corporate world. I was in the, mm -hmm. the clearance world as well. And um, I was working out and helping people working out and I was doing it on the side, you know, and I was making, I was chunking up some money. I was really chunking up some nice money doing it on the side. And I was happy with that. I was work, working for HP at the time and I had no intentions really on leaving my, leaving my gig, but I was thinking about it. But you know, it's that comfort thing of, you know, getting that nice check every two weeks. But then there was one year where HP said, hey, we're not gonna, there was rumblings of, we're not gonna give you raises. We're not gonna give you raises next year. And when I went in for my review, I already knew what was up. And the guy said to me, yo, we can give you, um, we can't give you a raise, but we can give you these gift cards to go get you these, a TV or a, a, a what do you say, a Genesis, Sega Genesis. He I basically offered me some games. In that moment, in that very moment, I made up my mind that no one could have that much control over how much wow. money I make. Mm -hmm. So in that moment, I started to research taking a hiatus. And at HB, you could take a year hiatus. So I did some more hustling in my business, saved up some more money, talked to some folks, and I just took the dive about a year wow. later. So that was, the, that was the push for me. That's awesome. That's awesome. Do we have any questions in the chat about that? It's not necessarily, well, it is definitely, um, there are some questions that are there and I think it's all intertwined and, and, and related in terms of what motive, motivated individuals to go into their particular business. So on the flip side of that, one of the questions were okay. talking about finances as it relates to business, as it relates to personal, keeping it separate. But, you know, if I am going to, you know, how do I know when to, when it's time to fire my job and what that's going to look like shifting from a mindset of an employee down to an employer and realize that check ain't coming around every two weeks. And I got to really hustle for the grind to make sure that the coins are, you know, coming in. So how do we, you know, talk about that separation of business and personal finances, keeping it separate, how to feel comfortable enough to realize, you know, being okay with your money going up and down as you're transitioning and, you know, going around. And definitely, how do you keep that mental um, fortitude uh, going forward when you make it this transition and understanding? Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I'll just say a few things, but I'd love to hear from other people. I mean, I, I think it definitely helps um, to save some money before you get started, right? Um, I wouldn't jump out there, you know, if I only had one month of expenses. So like Coach David said, you know, he, he took a year and put more money aside and planned his departure. Um, I think that you know, that's, that's really the optimal thing to do. In my situation, I was laid off um, after negotiating a $20 million contract. So it doesn't matter what, what you, right? Because <laughs> it's just, you know, but um, I was a very diligent saver and investor. So um, I was cool, you know, um, but I definitely would, would advise you to try to save some money um, and understand what your expenses are. And you definitely, you know, a lot of times um, um, financial advisors will tell you to have three to six months worth of expenses. If you're going to step out in a business, you definitely need to have more than that, um, at least a year. <laughs> and also, I would say, um, do what, what some of us have done. Start a business on the side so you can get used to understanding what it's like to do that. You know what I mean? Um, and because when you have a side business, you get a sense of, okay, I got to keep these receipts. I have to have a, a way to track my expenses. Um, certainly you want to have a separate bank account. That helps tremendously. Um, so I don't know if anybody else has any other feedback. That's just my, my two cents. Yeah. I, I, would, I, would, I would definitely jump in and, and piggyback off of that. Definitely save money. I saved money uh, before I left. Um, but just like, uh, you know, Dave was saying, um, you know, working myself out of the job, 
uh, was a was a was a big thing, you know. And I always talk about the cash flow quadrant because sometimes we throw around business, right? And so in the cash flow quadrant, you have the employee, self-employed, business owner, and investor. So most of the time, when you make that jump, you're actually going from the employee phase to a self-employed phase. So it's just you until you actually get the business running because a business owner owns a system. System standard for saving yourself time, energy, and money, because now you're overriding the efforts of other people. So you have people that are actually working your business where you're not in it. You, that system works for itself. Like Coach Dave, was, we were talking about before, his, 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 his gym now, his, his personal training has now, it's a system where he can, he can take vacations and all that type. But when you're self-employed, you're 100% of one. So you got to hustle every day. You got to get after it. If you, there is no sick leave. There is no, you know what I'm saying? You got to do D all the above. You got to spend all the plates. So, you know, when you're in that self-employed phase, you got to grind, you know what I mean? Until you get it to the business side where it's duplicated or that system now runs without you. And then ultimately you want to transition to like, like Michelle saying, the investor side where your money's just working for you and you just, you know, you enjoy the complete dream. So, so that's, that's my main thing is definitely saving that money and understand that when you jump out there, you you gotta be you gotta be cranking. There there are no no days off. Like you are your plan. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody's coming to save you. You know what I mean? So you know. So I always tell people it's like a duck going across the water. You know, a duck looks smooth like 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 a mug on the water, but underneath it, he paddling like crazy to stay afloat. So that's how you are when you when you're on that grind. You know what I mean? So only wow. other thing I would go ahead, ask go ahead, um, Coach David. Start to cut your overhead now. Like mm, good point. Things that you can cut out, things that you can live, that you can mm -hmm. live without now, like things that are like a luxury right now, start to cut it out and get used to living without it. That money will come in handy when you can really look at your budget, really look at your budget and look at like audit yourself now. Like, I mean, every penny, not only your, your money, but your time as well. Audit your time and audit your money where everything is going so that you can see where you can cut back, where you're spending too much in time and money. So that's the big thing for me is cutting your overhead. That is so huge, that's what incredible. you just said. Um, Cause I did that too. And I wasn't even thinking about leaving full time per se, but I started doing that as well. Um, looking at my mortgage, could I refi? Or I actually ended up downsizing, getting a smaller house cause I didn't need a bigger house, right? And, you know, get rid of your car note <laughs> if you can do that, you know, so then you don't have a car note. That's a big expense, a car note insurance and all that. So if you can get rid of a car note, for example, or, or you know, those are things that, that you can cut out. And I, I did. So um, I was just on in that mindset. And so when COVID hit, I didn't have a lot of overhead either, you know, so um I agree with you. I think that's, I think you should do that anyway, frankly, yeah, you, anyway, you know, exactly. um, you know, because you, yes, because that enables you to save more money. So imagine if you didn't have a car note and you could save that every month, if nothing Very else true. could be helpful. Right. Yeah, so I, I think that as you're thinking about entrepreneurship or just financial independence in general, Think about where you can reduce your expenses and, and how can I save that money or invest that money? Awesome. I agree fully with that. I, that, I definitely agree with everything that has been said. And I'm going to tie these you know, questions because they are building upon you know, one another. So um, an individual, one of our um, audience members had asked this evening, um, did you have a business plan prior to you starting your business and it kind of ties into us that we're talking about, which you're highlighting. It's like, you know, developing a financial plan uh, beforehand. So you have like the business plan that you want to have that outline, like what your business is. Did you have that prior? You know, what was your financial plan? You know, as we're talking now to um, shift to fire your job and go into whatever you would like to do. And then behind that is what tools or resources did you learn to prepare you for the financial aspect of owning a business. So with your you know, financial plan, what were some of the tools and you know, resources that kind of help prepare you for owning a business? So 
did you have a business plan prior to you leaving getting into and then as a continuation of the financial plan what tools and resources did you utilize to prepare you to be a business owner he wants to take that question I thought Monty was about to say something. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I was. I'm sorry. I was going to comment on the overhead part. If you don't mind. All right, go quick. ahead. Yes, because um, during the COVID period, I know a lot of shop owners, um, hair salon owners, barbershop owners that really um suffered through it because you know we all had to shut down. So they used to get in the booth rent from all of their stylists and barbers. Now a lot of ones I know that went out and um had high overhead. It really hurt them because the, a lot of a lot of um. A lot of the business owners go in and they say, I'm gonna get this shop and put 10 chairs in and I'm gonna I'm gonna jam off. I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna get that. But what happens when you don't you can't fill those 10 chairs? Your landlord still wants the money. So during this COVID period, I know a lot of um barbershop owners and salon owners that was really hurting because they had to shut down and they couldn't get the booth rent from the stylists or the barbers. And now you have this large overhead that you weren't even thinking about when you went in, in business. So I was just wanting to comment on that part as far as your overhead. I mean, as far well as having the lower, lowest overhead as possible, because the higher your overhead is, you got to come up with that BGE. That's separate, of course. Your, your cable, everything else is on top of that. So I was just want to come in on as far as with the overhead, keeping it low. All right, thank you. Definitely keeping um, your overhead low. And I think as Coach David mentioned earlier, being able to look at the expenses and being able to see what can be reduce and also being able to navigate and utilize resources that may be available in your you know community so being able to look uh look at your business and look at what is it that i exactly need now to start what's going to keep me afloat for the next year in terms of expenses and then being able to increase as you are able to expand and you're able to see more resources um coming in so thank you everyone for just you know, sharing all this wonderful information, but were there any particular tools or resources that you use um, that you use to learn to prepare you for the financial aspect of owning your business? A business coach. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Definitely share some more. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely had a, a business plan, but it wasn't anything without that business coach, someone that had done it before me and done it well. Like, so the business coach and then Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of mastermind groups, mm -hmm. so join, joining mastermind groups mm -hmm. and networking with people that were doing what I wanted to do in this industry and outside of this industry and going to conferences. But the big one was the business coach and that business coach getting me to come on Zoom and actually have to show my numbers and show my spreadsheet, show my KPI, show all that stuff and teaching me how all of that works. Like there's a lot of stuff that works behind the scenes. Yeah, you can start making money, but you need to know how all the money, how all the money works, how all the numbers work. And I'm sure that James can speak more to that, but yeah. the numbers, the numbers are everything. So you need the mentor, you need the business coach, you need the mastermind groups. Yeah, I, I would just piggyback off of that is that that's, that's huge, uh, David. When you talk about the business coach, for me, it was the same thing. I had a mentor. Uh, somebody that had done it before me, holding me right. accountable every single week. We would go over the numbers. What did my business produce? How many new clients did I pick up? What was the revenue generated? What did I put out? You see what I'm saying? Because if it's it's real easy, especially when you leave a job to to look at just the 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 result and say, oh, you know, I made two thousand dollars. Where you might have you might have been making you might have made two thousand dollars, but it took you eighty hours to make it. But now you made two thousand dollars in six hours, right? So now what in your mind, you stop, right? And so when you stop that momentum, you've got to now build that up. It's not like a job. So where my business coach says, okay, now you replaced your income. Don't stop, keep going. That, that accountability keeps you pushing because in business, there is, no, uh, there is no every two week paycheck or every week check. So you could have a month where business is booming. You could have a month where it's okay. You could have a month where it's, it's kind of, hey, you know, it's dry. So you want to make sure that those averages and being account being held accountable is huge. The other thing is, is like he said, mastermind groups, you've got to work on your mindset. Absolutely. Mindset is key. True wealth starts in the mind and you have got to develop. You've got to read books. 
You've got to join, like you said, uh, uh, mastermind groups of people that think like you. And I and I and I'm gonna be honest when I say this. Please don't take offense, but it's true. You can't. Uh, it, it's you can't kind of hold on to employee friends because when they're not gonna understand your struggle. You know what I'm saying? We can hang out, but but business conversation goes to business people. You know, you see what I'm saying? Employee conversations they're different. And if you're talking to the wrong people, it can take you out of the game, right? Because I tell people all the time: is is it easy? No, but is it worth it? Yes. You understand what I'm saying? No, it's not easy. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it gets going to get hard, right? But right. Auntie, when you look back, it is so worth it. You see what I'm saying? Right. So that's why your mindset is key, right? You've got you've to control your mind and, and stay in a positive mindset. No matter what it looks like, everything's unbelievable. Doesn't matter whether it's unbelievably good, unbelievably bad. Nobody knows. When your friends say, how's business? Unbelievable. You see what I'm saying? And it it could be unbelievable, terrible right now, but I'm saying it's unbelievable. So you know what I mean? So you got to remain positive and all that. And that's that's from that mentorship and working on your mind. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. One, I, I would I'll say this, I'll drop a book that was near and dead, two books, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And yes. What to Say When You Talk to Yourself by Shad Heimstetter. Those were two books that just uh, you know, really, really helped me out uh when I when I jumped out there um because self-development is key. Um, because for me, uh, it's about developing leaders. Uh, so it's not just me. I have agents that I train and develop to do this as well. So mm-hmm. you really have to guard your mind and build your mind up because you're dealing with so many personalities on a daily basis, clients, as well as my, my team, my team members. So, all right. Definitely the book. Thank you. Grow, book. Thank you. Grow right. Yeah. And then awesome. I would add, I would add atomic habits since he, yes, up. yes, yes. That's what coach. Okay. That is what Coach David has us reading for those who are um, part of the Live Now um, Fit Camp, Atomic Habits. Thank you for those um, suggestions. Thank you. I'm going to add that today. Atomic Habits. Right. And so another question, since we're talking about the coaching, we're talking about, you know, mentoring, uh, mind, mastermind groups, a question was, how did you find your business coach or how did you find your uh your mentor how did you know which mastermind group to connect with that would help propel you forward in your business so i found my business coach um when we had an economic development conference last year and she spoke she was one of the speakers and i was so impressed with her and she was doing what i was trying to do And I reached out to her after and she offered a discount for anybody who attended the conference. And I, she became my business coach and she's been phenomenal, still work with her. And, um, and she's just been a godsend. And because of her, I'm getting all these hits on, on LinkedIn. And I just saw Mm -hmm. a lot of momentum in my business um, because of her. So when we have our conference in the spring, make sure you join. Um, because I found her there. Um, but, but I'm sure you can also find people through LinkedIn as well. Um, uh, but that's how I found her. Mastermind groups, um, a, a former colleague of mine um, at uh, when I worked at Coca-Cola and he left and started his own business. And he was doing mastermind classes uh, on the book, Think and Grow Rich. So um, he invited me to join and I did. And it was great. I joined actually twice. So um, that's how I found my coach and mastermind group. And it's so funny you said that, Ms. Tora Michelle, because I reached out to one of the individuals from the conference last year as well. Because yes. going back to what Coach David and Jane said, you got to get mm-hmm. your mind right. Yes. To plan your exit strategy, you got to have a plan. And so yes. I started setting those things up by getting a financial planner because I was blowing money. I wasn't yes. working smart, right? Yeah. Like, Again, you, your hustle is different when the lights are going to get turned off, when there's no other money. It's a different kind of hustle mentality, not a first and a 15 check is right. coming. So she right. taught me during really? COVID, the blessing was I wasn't traveling because I travel a lot. So I mm-hmm. paid off debt because mm-hmm. if you're the first in your family to go to college, you made it, right? But no one necessarily tell you how to manage this money and this great responsibility that comes. No. And I was irresponsible. I can say that. I was very irresponsible because mm-hmm. I got banked, right? 
Mm-hmm. But right. no, I didn't. I had a poor mentality, so I had to change right. it. Yep. So I started with my financial planner and now I'm making my exit strategy because I bust my bleep for the federal government. Why can't I do it for myself and leave something for right. my right. family? So if you don't go hard for yourself and they will replace you with four or five people for the one job you do. So I had to go hard for me. And so that's the strategy. I'm almost there. I'm selling my last um, property and that's going to give me zero debt. Then the other money I'm working with the planner to reinvest in. So y'all, the Honda, I'm driving the Honda till it's a clunk, clunk, clunk. So if you see me on 495, <laughs> holla at your girl because I'm not picking up any additional expense until my bank account reflects a business woman with six plus months rent. So if I get laid That's off, good. it's not on my husband to right. carry me, right? That's right? So you have to change your mindset. And I did a lot of classes with SBA as well. And mm-hmm. I joined a lot of groups. So you get around like-minded people because the conversation is a different type of stimulation. You ain't got right. time to joke around. I like Real Housewives like everybody else, but when I'm trying to make my money, it's a different kind of grind because it's nothing like having somebody else dangle your life and you don't have any control of it. That's right. So you have to reassess. So I'm always reading. I'm always getting into different groups. And I believe you should surround yourself with people smarter than yourself. <laughs> If you're the smartest person in the group, it's time to change the group. That's up. the problem. You right. know what I mean? That's and that's good. not to yeah. insult anybody mm-hmm. who's to bring that's people real. up, but I'm stagnant if I'm not challenged or stretched or uncomfortable. So right. I, I'm stimulated by this conversation because I'm learning things I didn't even think about before. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, failure helped me grow because I mm-hmm. failed when I didn't have some of those plans. That's so good. that's why I speak to mm-hmm. go back to what David said get your business plan in order, tweak it. It's not yep. extra stone. You got to tweak it. It's ebb and flow. He couldn't go to his gym. He went online, killing the game. He adjusted. So you have to have some type of flexibility and adaptability to be a business owner. And, and it's some nights you ain't going to sleep, but you'll sleep in retirement. Your kids' <laughs> kids going to sleep because right. you set right. them up nice. So just right. really change your mindset. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And thank you. Um, thank you for that, um, Moniqua um, Gray. And one of the things that I just want to raise because James mentioned it earlier, um, the key word, and I know Coach David says this all the time as well, but don't want to be overlooked, this word was accountability. One, being accountable to you first, like you got to be able to have that accountability and be able to give others permission that you say, if you're going to be my coach, my business coach and everything, then you got to allow them to hold you accountable because this is what you said you want. You can't have them be accountable for you, but it starts with you first as it relates to accountability and as James you know mentioned just like you're in the army you have a battle buddy have an accountability you know partner so um so gray is one of my accountability you know partners so we're up late at night talking about how mm-hmm. we're going to look at this plan and how we're going to continue to make a dollar out of 15 cents and stretching and everything but we hold each other accountable and if you want to see your business grow you want to see the numbers in that bank account you can't get around accountability so you want to make sure that you have that accountability that you hold and that you have that team that holds you to that particular level of accountability and if you don't have that then you need to be able to um, build that within your circle and within your um, community exactly exactly all right we ready for our next question? Okay, so the next question is, what steps did you take to keep your business open? And we talked a little bit about that, um, but can can some of you expound on that a bit? Um, so for me, uh, for my business to stay open, um, I know we had talked about it. We were saying that, you know, when it first launched, you know, financial professionals were, were uh, uh, essential. So I could still meet with my clients um, face to face. So, you know, that was going. But then when it totally shut down, uh, it was um, what I had to do was I had to basically uh, revamp a lot of stuff, Um, you know, kids being home. um, So I had to, you know, ramp up the technology in the house, uh, uh, beef up the Internet. uh, uh, And then the thing was, was, you know, especially in the financial realm, I'm like, well, how are people going to be comfortable with, you know, meeting via Zoom? But then Zoom was the way of life. So. 
it, it was kind of like, it was just adapting to the Zoom meetings. Um, some clients didn't want to meet, uh, some new referrals didn't want to meet, but eventually, you know, later it, it came up, you know, it, 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 they basically, that, that change where they wanted to meet then, but um, really had to beef up the internet, uh, get the technology going. Um, like uh, Dave was talking about, as far as with the social media, I, I'm not really big on social media, but I had to, you know, use that uh, tool as well um, and things of that nature. Uh, but that was that was the main thing of uh, really learning the technology, learning the Zoom world, how to share screen and, and share documents and get stuff signed. Because in my in, in my line of work, right. like we have to have wet signatures for for trades right. and for investments. So you know sometimes I may have to run out and grab a. Uh, I figured out how I could get um, uh, stuff uh, uh, notarized. You know what I'm saying electronically. So so all those things I had to you know I picked up uh, DocuSign. Uh, Zoom. Uh, it was it was a couple other services that I had added. Um, you know the expenses because like I tell people, you got to spend money to make money. Uh, you know, went and bought a new laptop and, and things of that nature. Uh, camera lighting and, and you know what I mean. I'm a dark skin brother, so I got had the lights right. You know what I mean. So <laughs> so you know what I mean. It's, it's presentations, everything. You know. So so all those all those type things. Uh, I had to make those adjustments, and a lot of people that did not make those adjustments their businesses went went down because they didn't want to they were like I'm, I'm used to what I'm doing that's how I meet my clients if they don't want to meet with me they'll you know they'll meet with me when you know what I mean it, it just didn't it didn't last they, they kind of went under yeah. anyone else want to chime in on that one no? yes okay me? yes yeah so um basically what I did um I ended up moving shop to my garage because I said you know what I gotta service my clients somehow not everybody can come to your house you already know I'm be honest with you I'm gonna keep it 100 with y'all my big right. money clients my, my, the ones that the ones that look out for me I let them come to my house and uh, my garage is heated and air conditioned and cool so you can live in my garage basically so I said you know what I'm gonna move shop to the garage and service my clients in there for the first month and then the second month they was able to say um one barber per building so after the second month I ended up cutting there by myself all day long until I was able to open back up with the rest of the barbers. And I had to play it safe because um, they had inspectors rolling around trying to jam shops up, you know, because people was cutting hair, you know, you know, with the door locked and all that and the inspectors were come, coming around. So I had to, as bad as I wanted to open back up, I said, I can't chance it. And during that, during that, during that um, process, I was able to, money that I saved, because I've been a saver all my life. So I said, you know what? Now I got this downtime, I'm gonna go ahead and remodel the shop while the shop is closed. So I ended up getting the shop remodeled. I got the chairs reupholstered, I got it repainted, got you know all new stuff during COVID. So I said, you know what? We open back up, we'd be fresh and new. So that's how I ended up surviving. Very nice pivot. That made sense all the way around. So you again showed how you adjusted, right? and you adapted to your environment and you definitely made, you know, you made sense out of what you were going through in regards to the challenge that you were being confronted with. So that that works. And that's what we, again, have to remind ourselves. We just have to adjust and be flexible and, and of course, pivot at times. So I'm going to go to the next question. And this is the question that most people want to know getting into business. Did you suffer any financial losses or gains during the pandemic? Did things get better or did things get worse? Or was it a moment in time where you again had to reassess because you didn't know how the climate was moving? So for us, for us I go back to the business coach. So I had you know a lot of conversations with my business coach at the beginning, as well with my team, but my business coach, and you know, it was easy to panic at the beginning, mm -hmm. you know, it was easy to plan it. So that's where having that mentor, that business coach to actually get you to really look at this thing. And Nicole was like, hey, David, chill. Nope, don't panic. You have a strong, you have a strong community of clients. You're going to be good to go. So just do business as usual, just take it online and service mm -hmm. them at the highest possible level that you can online. And that's what we did. And it's worked out for us. And we actually, you know, year to year, you know, from March to March, we did better 
during COVID than we did the year right. before. So, um, you know, anything is possible as long as you keep your eyes on the prize and you get a mentor and a coach. Yeah, I, I would say the same thing as well. Uh, you know, talking to my coach, um, she literally was like, James, you got to look at it different. She was like, it's, it's now open season. Uh, and so what, what we did was I started to get licensed in more states because now it, the world was open. So I expanded in 13 different states, uh, have agents now on the West Coast uh, and on the East Coast, Midwest. So, so it, was, it was a chance to, to thrive. Uh, we definitely gained um, because of the fact that more people were now open and now ready for the information that I had been jumping up and down, preaching to people where they were like, I'm good. I got the job, I got the paycheck, I'm okay. When, mm -hmm. when, the, when the wheels start to shake and the steering wheel, I call them dashboard moments. Now people were calling me saying, hey, uh, can, can we talk now? So that was the thing. It was, you know, the things of, hey, let's be prepared. Now it's like, hey, I really need to sit and talk with you. You know what I mean? People are now willing to talk about financials because that paycheck may not come now. Before, they, they never had those worries but 2020 opened everybody's eyes to say not just the investments but even with life insurance because I do everything you know so so even with that people are calling hey you know what let me get this taken care of you know um so so all those things uh just just changed the game and so uh we definitely had uh, a great turnaround and it's still still growing you know what I mean we're still going and, and riding it and so you know it's we're just excited about that but it was I always tell people it's, it's all all God you know what I'm saying there's a blessing in the storm because somebody has said it earlier they were talking about failure and I always say you fail your way to success it's you learn and go so people look at this as you know it was a failure we had some losses I, I lost loved ones and all that but at the same time business-wise it was uh, a blessing so um so those are the things that you that you really got to look at in that and just know you know, I know that some people did not have gains, uh, but, you know, we did because of the, the field we were in and uh, we, we took it up. So. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Uh, can you hear? Can everybody hear me? OK. OK. My audio has been going back and forth. One of the questions was, can, can you name some of the business conferences or mastermind conferences that uh, some of the uh, some of you attended or participated in? Well, mine were industry specific. So I go to, you know, my conferences in mm -hmm. in, in health and mm -hmm. then end up, there are all sorts of connections that you can make to get into different masterminds, hire different business coaches and things like that. So that's what's ticking me. So whatever industry you're in, I'm sure that they have those avenues. And I'll say too that, you know, you can find um, different groups on, on um, LinkedIn too, um, depending upon what, what the business is. But to your point, you, you really can seek those out um, based on the industry. I agree. I agree Anybody as well. Else? Mm -hmm. I, I agree with that. It was, uh, for me, it was uh, investment seminars uh, and conferences mm -hmm. industry-wide uh, to, to, to navigate um, the markets, um, which was huge because uh, a lot of clients would call. So I had to hold hands, you know, and I, I had to say, hey, and that's the reason why you have a financial coach. You know, it's three reasons why people fail when it comes to finances. One, they don't have the financial education. Two, they don't have a financial plan. And three, they don't have a financial coach, someone holding them accountable. And so when this happened, March and April, clients are calling, hey, my portfolio's down 50 grand, 60 grand. What do I do? I, I need to pull out. No, you don't. Listen, let's talk. It's on sale. What was the time horizon? That's where I helped them revisit. What, what are we doing right now? We're investing. We're not, we don't need this money for another 10, 20 years. It's going to come back. It's on sale. And, you know, for, for, for some clients, I have to break it down in, in shoe sales. If, 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 if uh, the, the Prada shoes went on sale, are you running out the store or are you running in the store, right? You understand? You running in the store, you're going to buy two pair now, right? Because they're on sales. Buy one, get one free. Same thing with investment. So you have to understand that. So having somebody to hold your hand and not, not, not panic during those times because the television, I always tell my clients, turn the noise off, turn the TV off because they're creating panic and fear. Okay. Yeah. They want you to panic, but this yeah. is the time where, where, where millionaires are created. This is where uh -huh. money can be made if you're strategic and you listen. And so understand you just have them 
revisit their goals, revisit what we were talking about. And I say, now's the time. It's on sale. I said, if Tide goes on sale, are you not going to Giant and buy Tide? You're going to buy a bunch of Tide. It go to $6 because you know it's going back to 15 next week. Same mentality. Let's go get that. Go make that money. You understand what I'm saying? Because money makes money. It's always flowing. Is it flowing to you or is it flowing through you? And a lot of times it flows through our hands. We get it and we we go and make somebody else rich. So showing you how to acquire those assets and build that generational wealth. You know what I mean? So so that's that's the one thing of yeah, adapting and on that that's it. Supply that's and demand. It. That is it. Supply and demand because why start a business during a pandemic, right? Folks are gonna raise that question. Why do jewelry, right? Where are you going? Everything is going to open back up at some mm -hmm. point. And if you go back historically, um, World <coughs> War One, World War Two, lipstick was one of the highest selling things. Who's wearing lipstick during the war? So people always are looking for ways to feel good about themselves. So you will be surprised at what the supply and demand is if you go back and look at different trades and commodities. So why not? Ask yourself, how can you make yourself the hottest commodity during this time? Outside is going to open up. Even if in, we're just in the spring, you want to look good. You want to feel good. I can't tell you how many online gym classes and different things that I did. And something else I think that Michelle and Laura have pointed out in terms of our growth and learning, me and my tax guy are real close. <laughs> because you figure out what are those business expenses that you can write off yeah. online or in a brick and mortar type place, right. your cable. You, you know, your internet, my home office, my life. So you keep like, keep all of your receipts. When David goes to his one-on-one -on -one trainings, that mileage is going towards the business. If you put signage on your car, your advertising, yeah. you can write your car off if you elect to buy a new car because your business dictated. So get very familiar with capital gains, um, business law. Uh, just familiarize yourself with taxes and what it means for each state. Um, that's why I say me and my tax got cool because we went through the same thing, Michelle, with real estate. Yes. I, I was the landlord, that part. Yeah. Yep. So you need to really know what the laws are. And here's the deal. Hire people smarter than you, but you better do your due diligence and understand. You just can't sign off because they say it's right. Do your research yourself. Right. That's Don't right. Get caught out there. And be sure. That's right. And for fun, I went to Spain last week. I visited a winery. Hint, hint. That was a write-off. That was that was a write-off. That was a business trip. That's hint, like hint. A business trip to me. Oh, yeah, it was. Business mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> trip. And I'm and I'm oh, all for yeah. it. What I'm what I'm hearing from all of you um, holistically is that you have to be in it. You know, we sometimes say you got to eat and sleep it, but I'm talking about not being one foot in and one foot out. Like if this is your desire, if this is your passion, if this is where you're trying, you know, the avenue you're trying to go down, you have to be in it because the more you get in it and you digest it, that's when you meet the people you're supposed to meet. That's when you have the connections and the networks that you need to be involved in because you'll just spiral into it. And it will set you up for greatness. So it's literally, you have to be 10 toes down in whatever it is that you want to definitely manifest for yourself in the future. I, I want to bring up a question that, that someone asked earlier and it didn't get asked. And that's about um, developing business credit. Um, someone wanted to know, how do you, how do you go about doing that um, when you're starting your business? Anybody want to? Well, this, what yeah. the, James, the financial guy. Well, well, for 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 so so ultimately speaking, West business credit is one of the. I always say it's it's basically uh, it's it's not something easy to jump into, uh, but you have to you know take your EIN, uh, go to your go to your bank. You know, I always say start at your bank uh, and work there, build that relationship to start that business credit. So once you have that EIN, you can now start to apply for credit under there. Okay, uh, if you're a sole prop. Uh, you know, you can start with your social security number and then transition. And when you start your business, you know, get that EIN and you can start to build that credit. But you have to build that 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 EIN profile uh, and, and sort of they, they kind of go off of you a little bit and the EIN. So you having a good credit uh, 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 score will help with that business relationship as well. That's why I always say start at your local bank uh, where you have that relationship, where, they, where they'll start you with a small 
business card. You know what I'm saying? Even if you got to go the secured route, you know what I mean? You want to start to establish that business credit if, if that's something that you may need. OK, uh, because, you know, a lot of times different strokes for different folks. Everybody doesn't need business credit. You understand what I'm saying? So so things of that nature. So if it's something that you need uh, to have that 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 credit line available, you can you can go ahead and go that route. Mm -hmm. I can't believe it. We're getting we are getting close to time. So we, we probably have time for maybe one more question uh, posed to the speakers and then maybe a few more from the audience and we're going to start wrapping it up. So Laura, I'll let you ask the, the next question. Right. Please. So we had three questions remaining and I'm going to pick the one that should stand the test of times. What was the most important lesson you learned during this time? And I, yeah, y'all take a moment or two to really think about that one because we all learned some lessons during this time. I, I think we, we talked. I think we talked about it, you know, before we all jumped on the call. And it's you know, James's word was adapt. You know, my word was pivot. And you know, just expect the unexpected. You know, don't get too high, don't get too low, and know that that's the way business is. It ebbs and it flows. So. Mm -hmm. When the, when, when the months are really good, don't trip. Because we had one of our best months during COVID. Mm -hmm. Don't trip. Don't trip. Yeah. And we've had some lower months. Don't trip about that either. So just stay level. That's the biggest yeah. biggest lesson for me. Uh, for, for me uh, as well, like you talked about with the ADAPT and all of that, everything he said, amazing. And uh, as well, I would just add to trust the process um trust mm -hmm. trust the process of like he said the ebbs and the flows so know that i'm telling you it, you know it's gonna get better if you continue to sow right i always tell people uh you know one one plants one waters the increase comes from god so as long as you're sowing right sowing good seeds which is doing your due diligence doing your work right. the harvest is gonna come you don't right. plant a seed and see the tree tomorrow and so many times people want to get into business and, and see the money immediately, right? right. It's not yeah. like that, right? You got to plant that seed, right? Mm -hmm. And let that thing, you know, get nurtured and, and let it let it re reach its harvest, right? Mm -hmm. And because when it does, you know, it, but if you keep going back and picking up your seed, it's never going to take root. That's what so many people will do. They'll say, you know, oh, two months, nothing happened. This must not be of God. Let me go do something else. And then you planting in something else and you're, you're always doing, uh, uh, Laura said it, you got to be in. You know what I'm saying? Plant it and then and then let's go. The harvest is gonna come. Uh, one of the biggest things of when you look at your 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 mindset too is when you're in the business, always continue to focus. I focused on my why, not my how. You understand what I'm saying? So why do why does my business need to thrive? Why do I need to go out here every single day? Why why why? Not how. So many people when COVID hit was how am I gonna do this? And the how will paralyze you the why will propel you, right? I got I got to go do this because my kids got to eat. I got to go do this because I got to provide. I got to go do this because people need my help. I save people's lives. You understand? I'm the financial doctor. I'm the money coach. People need me. That's my why. If I don't get to them, they're going to die. They're going to they're gonna be stressed out. James, get out there. So it was the why that propelled me, not the how. How am I going to reach them? How that God will work all that out. I just got to right. focus on my why and stay the course and trust the process. Absolutely. So, yeah. I think Absolutely. James nailed that. I think he nailed like not <laughs> sure the box because I, I totally Absolutely. agree. To whom much is given, much is required. You mm -hmm. have to show up when nobody else is looking. That's right. And mm. the consistency is key. Even I've done an event and I sold one piece of jewelry. But I act like that was my best day because that's one more piece that I didn't sell. So what do you do? You tweak the process. You go back again. You study. You read. Okay, that's not the area. Let's tweak it and change it up. If you show up every day and be grateful for the things that you have, Christian-based or not, because I don't know everybody's religion, it's going to happen. If he said it was going to happen, it's going to happen. You just have to be right. patient and trust the process that it will. Don't get deterred because you had a great day. I had a great day at Pizza King Day Festival. Then I had a day when it's one thing. I had a great day when it's 10 things. But each day gets you stronger 
That's right. So don't don't give up if this is what you really want to do. Do not give up. And there's a lot of there's a lot of businesses too, like you know, with paparazzi and the wine business that I'm doing that. All you have to do is pay like $50 or $20. And all of a sudden you got a website <laughs> and you are in business. Seriously. So, you know, there are ways to ease in. You know, and, um, you know, like Monique and I have done different types of businesses, you know, real estate certainly was a bigger investment, right? Um, and having to do, uh, you know, fix things up and renovate. But there are a lot of things that you can do that are like Mary Kay or other things that where you can make money on the side and save money and then try another business or do or add another one to your portfolio. So you don't always need a lot of overhead to start a business. Um, so I just want to put that out there, that if it's something that you're thinking about doing and you're concerned, you're not sure, try, try a small business in a box, if you will. Um, there's a lot of companies out there that have reps and, um, and you know, you're running it, you know, like your own. I talked to a sister yesterday who um, is doing, she does, she's, she's a travel agent. And I thought, really, they're still out there. She's making all kinds of money. Um, you know, booking trips for people, people want to travel and they're still traveling and she's finding them great deals and earning great commissions and traveling on her own. And I was like, I might try that too. So, and, <laughs> yes, I will. I will. And so, um, you know, so I started thinking about that too, because she's taking all these great trips and paying like $50 for her room. So in addition to coordinating, you know, weddings and honeymoons and girls trips and guys golfing trips. So there's just a lot of things that you can do that's out there that doesn't cost a lot of money to, to get into. Um, and you can still enjoy your passion um, doing it. So, Laura, I'm going to let you wrap us up. There's a few things I need to put in the chat. Okay. Well, um, we're down to the wire. And while you're assessing the chat, just make sure we don't have any last minute questions or information that we need to share out from the comments that people would like to hear. But um, y'all, I'm full. Like this was everything. Um, you guys have me motivated as I'm about to transition into a different direction of entrepreneurship. I'm excited about it. And uh, again, just taking all of the tools and the resources, the information, I mean, down to the books that you discussed, um, a lot of nice phrases and quotes. I wish we can capture the whole entire chat so we can see them, but it was, it was very uh, impactful. And I know that people definitely needed to hear this and they received it because again yet again they went off in the chat so we're going to have this information again we're live recording right now on Facebook and we're going to have a recording so people can go back and see it um, if they would like to you know review it again uh, for their pleasure um, again thank you to all of the panelists we appreciate you we don't take this thing for granted we know your time is of the essence as you're all entrepreneurs and business owners to my co-chair, my right-hand person, I appreciate you, all your hard work and your dedication. And of course, to the whole entire committee of economic development for the North Arundel County Alumni chapter. Big shout out to you all. This has been amazing. Look forward to Wealth Wednesday workshops every second Wednesday of the month, okay? We're showing you how to go on this journey to acquire and build wealth. And tonight we talked about entrepreneurship, we also talked about it in the essence of what it looks like in our current environment, we're still cons considered to be in a pandemic. So if no one else has any last minute remarks or any other additional information you'd like to share. Laura. Sure. I'm putting some things in the chat for them, the okay. survey. Um, okay. I put them in the chat already. Um, and so let me do that again, because okay. I don't know if people saw it because it, you, it kind of moved up. <laughs> and that's fine. Please, please, please fill out our survey and provide us some feedback so we know how to best serve you all. 
that's paramount to what we do. We don't want to just do to be doing. We want to have, you know, all of that information so we can definitely get you what you all need. So please fill out our survey. If you do not see it in the chat, we will be putting it on our website. And that's NACAC at DST.org. Okay. N A C A C D S T dot org. So Gregory, do you have yes. the link for the um for them to join uh the newsletter so they can get the That's, panelists' contact information? Again, everything should be in the chat. I put it in the chat. I put it in the chat a few minutes ago. Um also okay. too, I want to ask the tech team if you could just please put the contact information for our speakers on the screen. Yes. So if anyone is interested and contacting our speakers and give them a second here. So um, David, we have his information and James. And so if you wanna screenshot that, you wanna get a hold of them, they dropped some great nuggets today. Indeed. Please reach out to them. We'll give it a minute. And then we can go to the next one. And this is Moniqua and myself. So if you want to reach out to us, let us know. Moniqua has beautiful jewelry. All right, I think we're good. Unless, if, unless anybody needs to see it again, I think we're fine. All right. So again, thank you all again for joining us and you all have a great evening. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, ladies.